parents, siblings, grandparents, family, friends, and graduates to the 66th annual commencement exercises of Covenant College. We are delighted that we are able to gather in person to enjoy the embodied presence of fellow image bearers and to revel in the good work God has done in the lives of these graduates, both from the class of 2021 and from the class of 2020, who will walk across the stage this afternoon. To members of the class of 2020 who are here today, thank you for making the effort to come back and participate in this ceremony. We are honored by your presence with us. To members of the class of 2021, thank you for sharing your commencement ceremony with your friends from the class of 2020. Your gracious hospitality is a gift to the Covenant College community. Both of your classes have experienced a conclusion to your college careers unlike anything experienced by prior generations of Covenant Scots. Frankly, I hope no future generations will have to endure what you have. The great pivot, there's a word I'm tired of using, to remote instruction and the, the, the disruptive conclusion to an academic year that went with it. Semesters with no extended breaks, let's not do that again. Missed academic and co-curricular experiences, lots and lots of public health policies, protocols, and procedures. Thanks be to God, the great physician. It seems like we might be coming out the other end of the tunnel. And thank you um, to you, graduates, for the patience and perseverance and care for those around you that you have demonstrated over the course of the last 14 months. By God's grace and through your dogged determination, we are here. For all of us, it is a joy to gather today to celebrate the accomplishments of these graduates. Their many gifts and talents and achievements, and also to revel in God's faithfulness to them over the course of their lives in general and in these last few years in particular. We engage in this celebration of accomplishment and completion even as we look forward with eager anticipation to how God will use these graduates to bear witness to Christ's preeminence in all things in the years to come. Every commencement is a, bitter, is a bittersweet experience for those of us who work here at Covenant College. Uh, we mourn the fact that after this day, these graduates will no longer be with us. They will no longer be everyday members of our peculiar and wonderful little academic community. And that part of this ceremony is bitter. I should add that it is also sad, though perhaps a bit joyous, that we mark today the end of an era. For 21 years, the Coddington family have received their mail in box 59. <laughs> today, when Katie Coddington walks across the stage, hope, hopefully having already turned in his mailbox key, as the ninth of the Coddington children to have followed in their parents' footsteps by graduating from Covenant College, we mark the end of the longest ever continuous occupation of a Covenant College mailbox by a single family. And, and also, I might add, the longest ever continuous streak of tuition payments. <laughs> Covenant College will be a different place without a Coddington in the classroom, just as it will be a different place without the rest of these graduates on our campus. But bitter though it may be to see these graduates leave us, we also take great delight in these men and women and in sending them into the world to serve in a wide array of callings. And in the end, the sweet truly does outweigh the bitter. We are convinced that our loss is the world's gain. And we are confident that God has prepared you well, graduates, to take up the callings that he has placed upon you. We are thrilled that you have made it to this day, and we are proud to send you from this place into the world to serve the one who unites us, our Savior and King, Jesus Christ. As we begin our ceremony today, I would like to invite Dr. Kurt Stern, Professor of Engineering, to offer our invocation. Please pray with me. 
Heavenly Father, our great creator, sustainer, redeemer, and sovereign king, we humbly bow before you today, knowing that your love for us is deeper than we can fathom. In a time when our longings and frailties have been made particularly clear to us, we ask you to forgive us and clothe us in your righteousness. In a year when our desire to be together has not been fully satisfied, today we can rejoice and give thanks for a time to celebrate your grace to us. For we know, as your beloved David has told us in the Psalms, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For our God founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart. They will receive the blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. You may ask, who is this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Today we lift up our heads and open our gates that the King may come in. You, our maker, know how to celebrate. You tell us to clap our hands and shout and sing with cries of joy. Accept our praise, O awesome King. We are gathered in this place as the community of Covenant College, and we stand on the legacy of those who have established the foundations of this institution. May we honor you, the builder of this college, as we honor her and how she has enabled us. We thank you for abiding with us on the mount. We thank you for living with us in the dorms. We thank you for eating with us in the great hall. We thank you for playing with us on the courts and fields. We thank you for making art and music with us. We thank you for teaching us in the classrooms. We thank you for taking tests and writing papers with us. We thank you for accepting our praise in the chapel. We thank you for allowing us to serve one another. And now we thank you for sending us into the world. Our Savior and your Son, Jesus, was willing to unmask himself by walking with us. Now we ask that you might bless us by shining your face on us, because now we appreciate a little more fully what that means. It is in the precious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I'm delighted to stand before you today, recognizing that we are only here by God's grace. God's grace has been active in our lives, not only in this moment, but even before we received our acceptance letter from Covenant College, and even before the foundation of the world, as God designed that we should be here. And some of us are excited about where we are in life, while others of us are anxious or even dismissive. But wherever you are, be encouraged that God has you exactly where he wants you. This is something that Covenant has taught me through the classroom, residence life, and wrestling with my own sins. That the Lord my God doesn't make any mistakes at all, but has designed all things in accordance with his will. And I know what God's will is for me, and as well as for you. As Paul told the Thessalonians, this is the will of God, your sanctification. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God designed everything these past four years and the years? Basically, do you believe that God is not wasting your time, but is using everything in your life to make you become more and more like Jesus? The time that God has given us on this earth is not for us to be who we want to be, but it's for us to only be like Christ, our Savior. So whatever happens in your life, trust that God is not scrambling to put the pieces together, but he has graciously crafted the masterpiece of sanctification so we may reflect Christ our Savior in whatever God has in store for us. May God bless you. I feel like the past couple of weeks, I've been putting away a puzzle. I only got to enjoy the completion of this puzzle for a little bit, 
But now it's time to take it apart piece by piece and put it on my shelf of memories. I'm starting a new puzzle without the picture on the box. I'm trying to find the corner pieces, but I think I might have gotten the white owl a thousand piece puzzle. There's a lot of possibilities of where these pieces could go. So I'm trying to trust the creator to remember I know him and he's created unexpected grace in the past, even out of the horrible pieces that didn't seem like they could ever fit. The puzzle pieces I got while at Covenant, the people here, the classes I took, the experiences I had, the questions I asked were pieces of loss and grief, but also love and hope. Class of 2021, who are going into a bigger world than our little campus, but we also worship a bigger God than we could ever imagine. How amazing that expanding the possibilities of the unexpected also expands the possibilities for our Savior. And the inevitable loss, uncertainty, change, and the fear, may we rest in our Father who holds it all together and remember that somehow he still works good, even when pieces don't seem like they could ever fit. He's the one who finishes the puzzle. As we walk into places we don't recognize, may we recognize our God at work within us, within others, and within our circumstances. May we pull out the covenant puzzle every once in a while to piece it back together and remember God's faithfulness. As we step into a world with so many possibilities that feels like a white owl in a blizzard sometimes, may God's power work within us as he does immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. In all the pieces, the scary, the exciting, the complicated, may Christ truly be preeminent. I've loved putting the pieces together with you. Thank you, faculty, staff, and most of all, class of 2021. We did it. <laughs> Let's join our voices together in singing all creatures. Thank you, professors, faculty, staff, parents, families, and friends who are here today to support both the 2020 and 2021 classes. It is wonderful to be together again with so many Covenant College Scots. Looking back on my four years at Covenant, I am overwhelmed with sweet memories of worshiping in chapel, diving deep into my studies, and fellowshipping with friends around great hall tables. When I consider the ways God has used covenant to shape me, I am overwhelmed with gratitude. When I got Dr. Halverson's email in March 2020 that all of our classes would be online, I felt disbelief and disappointment that this is how my time at covenant would end. But even through that experience, I see how covenant prepared us to walk faithfully in adversity. Class of 2020, I have seen incredible resilience from you all as we entered one of the toughest job markets in decades. I have seen you comfort each other in the midst of isolation and unrest, and I have seen professors reach out to former students with encouraging words in this new chapter of life. The bonds we formed at Covenant helped make last year less lonely and the amazing thing is these bonds will last for all eternity, literally. So here we are 
May of 2021, walking across the stage. Whether your time at Covenant ends today, or ended a year ago, or 60 years ago, I urge us to reflect daily on what we learned here. Let these lessons help you love God deeply and love your neighbor in every aspect of your life, your families, your communities, your workplaces, and your churches. Because while we might move on from covenant, we never really leave. Congratulations, my friends, and may Christ truly be preeminent in all our lives. Integration. This is the key word that I will take away from my time at Covenant College. Integration is founded on the presupposition that God's world is integral and infused with meaning. During my time at Covenant, I've learned how to create a curriculum that reflects the integral nature of God's world. And I've been challenged by all of my professors to examine myself and ask, am I living an integrated life that brings honor to Christ? Teachers are an embodiment of the curriculum for their students. I'm comforted by the reality that the Holy Spirit enlivens my faith, life, and teaching. I would be remiss not to comment on the structure of the master's program at Covenant because the design of the program supports the integrated life. From living on campus during the summers, I have learned from classmates and professors we enjoyed pancake breakfasts at the Kaufman's, performing skits in Dr. Beckman's class, and engaging in deep conversations with Dr. Pennington. The relationships that I have developed with my classmates and professors are all part of the education. Thank you to the faculty for modeling the integrated life. You are the living curriculum. Integration of curriculum and life integration are ultimately rooted in Christ. We believe that in him all things hold together. Colossians 1 verse 17. The greatest impoverishment of education would be to remove the creator from our students' learning. In contrast, how beautiful was God's design to let us learn more about him day by day. Education is truly a gift from God. My classmates and I deeply understand that God's world is integral, our curriculum should reflect this reality, and teachers must be exemplary models of life integration. Thank you, Covenant College, for teaching us the true meaning of the word integration. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. At Covenant College, it's our tradition to let our graduating seniors choose a commencement speaker from among our faculty thus giving them opportunity to have this occasion marked by an address from someone who knows them and who has had a profound influence on their lives. This year, we're pleased to welcome Dr. Robert Earl Barham, Associate Professor of English, as the speaker for our 66th commencement exercises. Professor Barham earned a BA in English from Louisiana State University, an MA in English from the University of Virginia, an MPhil in Medieval and Renaissance Literature from the University of Cambridge, and a PhD in English from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Before coming to Covenant in 2012, he taught at the University of Louisiana at Monroe, or he tells me it might be University of Louisiana Monroe, 
and at Belmont University. His teaching and research, research explore Renaissance literature and culture as well as Christianity and literature. Professor Barham and his wife Amy are members of Lookout Mountain Presbyterian Church and they live in St. Elmo with their three children, Robert Dale, Rosalie June, and Alice Marie. That's three kids, not six. Would you please welcome Professor Robert Earl Barham. <laughs> right, so it's about that time. <laughs> to Professor Halverson, the trustees, faculty, alumni, family members and friends, and most of all to the graduates, thank you for letting me share this day with you. I am very grateful. When I was a kid, I loved detective stories. Sherlock Holmes, The Hardy Boys, Encyclopedia Brown, The Three Investigators. I was so susceptible to these stories that two friends and I founded our own detective agency. We even made business cards. I remember distributing cards around my 200-person town and going on bike rides in search of business and suspicious behavior. The only case I recall was when my dad asked that we discover who damaged a ceiling fan with a toy lightsaber, and I took the case with solemnity. A week later, seated in a bright red and yellow McDonald's booth, I interrogated my younger brother's friend in the likeliest suspect. I remember tinting my fingers at one point and saying, oh really, that's very interesting, as I picked apart his alibi like Sherlock Holmes in some big reveal. Before his mother intervened, separated the two of us and contacted my parents, I nearly had a confession. At Covenant, I teach literary genres as distinct ways of thinking about our lives. When we read poets, novelists, and playwrights, we inhabit little worlds which can help us reconsider the actual world. Tragedy and comedy are easy enough to illustrate. We've all lost, we've all bumped up against our immortality. Likewise, we've all encountered the unique joys that comedy is so good for thinking about. Friendship, forgiveness, reconciliation. These days, though, it's mystery that I find myself thinking about, returning to for its insights. We are narrative creatures who live and die by the stories we see in our lives and the stories we give to those around us. You can bless or hurt profoundly based on the stories that you nurture. So today, I encourage you to think about life in terms of mystery. So what do mysteries do? What do they show us? Well, I love them first because everything we encounter following along with the detective is part of the mystery. The story radiates meaning, and we take note, eager not to miss it. For example, in The Hound of the Baskervilles, Sherlock Holmes identifies a woman by her perfume left on a sheet of paper. He says, there are 75 perfumes which it is very necessary that a criminal expert should be able to distinguish, and cases have more than once depended upon their prompt recognition. Did you get that? He recognizes 75 different kinds of perfume. Because mystery is woven into the tapestry of his world, there's no detail too small for Sherlock to note. He keeps his senses alert to the feast that this world has to offer. Mysteries imbue events, life itself, with significance. There's something out there to be discovered, so the detective pays ferocious attention. Second, the mystery pulls the detectives into it. Recognition of the mystery changes everything for the detectives. It reorients their perspectives, their priorities. They see it, and they're out the door chasing after it. At the beginning of the adventure of Abby Grange, for instance, Holmes wakes Watson at dawn, shouting, Come, Watson, come! The game's afoot, not a word! Into your clothes and come! This is no detached speculation from a distance. Instead, the mystery urges investigation, um, and often challenging inquiry, as the detective follows hunches uh, that he can't leave alone, or that won't leave him alone. To recognize the mystery is to be caught up in it. But while pursuing the mystery, the detective has to beware of false knowledge, misleading narratives. Along the way, there are those who insist on alternate, easier explanations, misguided stories that only compound the trouble. From Busman's holiday to the mystery of the rogue's reunion, detectives are told, just let it go. Things happen. 
There's nothing going on here. It doesn't matter. It happens every day. It's just an accident. But the detective knows better. Most importantly, just as the mystery draws the detective in, it alters the detective's circumstances. From Cormoran Strike to Lord Peter Whimsey, John Moat to Nancy Drew, just think of your favorite detective story and it likely will feature a protagonist whose life is upended, transformed by the mystery. In the mystery of the creep show Crooks, for example, my favorite detective story when I was a kid, Jupiter Jones investigates a mystery only to find that the bad guy has followed him home. In fact, he's waiting for Jupiter in Jupiter's secret headquarters. Dun, dun, dun. Discoveries in the world of detective stories are never consequence free. They change the detective's situation and self-understanding. This for me has always been part of the genre's attraction. I think it's what prompted hoping to be taken up into the mystery, to be transformed by it. So, my friends, how do these ideas apply to the days that lie ahead? Well, as with the detective story, something has happened that changes everything, is changing everything. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Everything is a mystery, and we are drawn into it. Behind all the master plots you'll encounter in life that explain who we are and what this world is like lies the mystery of Christ. We don't have faith in some secret knowledge or even our ability to read rightly. We have faith in Christ, who is the heart of the mystery. Paul calls him the mystery of God, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Here's what sustains us. We walk with the one who himself is the answer into a world shot through with God's goodness. With him, we address the most important questions in the particulars of all our undertakings. What does obedience look like? Where am I called to advance God's kingdom? What are the wonders that I am uniquely privy to? What's the loving kindness that I can see, the prompt to enjoy God and feast on his faithfulness, as scripture puts it? But as we address these questions, living them out moment to moment, we have to beware of false knowledge, false stories. Reading this mystery rightly means letting scripture ground our thought life, our storytelling, so that we don't miss the clues, the small opportunities for obedience, getting distracted by red herrings or even losing the plot of the story. We live in a world with a multiplicity of narratives, insistent, pervasive, compelling, Many of these stories try to divert us, insisting on knowledge that explains life away, reduces it, makes it safer, thinner, more palatable. This is who people really are. This is who you really are. This is why you're suffering. This is what success looks like. So much conspires to hinder us from a life filled with wonder, to convince us of seductive and reductive depictions of what's going on around us, that my neighbor is beyond redemption, that my own situation can't be redeemed, that God is absent or capricious and not who scripture says he is. And suffering and discomfort prompts us to compose stories that give us a sense of control. But the mystery defies easy intellectualizing, tidy binaries as if it's just a matter of thinking the right thing. Rabbi, who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind, asked the disciples. Neither says Jesus. Or standing before the one in whom all wisdom and knowledge is hidden, Pilate asks, what is truth? With an irony that we can feel in our bones. False knowledge distorts, yes, but it also anesthetizes. We need to see again, to recognize, to remember, and we need others to help us do that. We face the mystery together. When fellow English professor Cliff Foreman talks about covenant as God's grace in his life, I know what he means. My colleagues have encouraged a disposition toward mystery and wonder, and you've encouraged this disposition too. These things I've learned from these good people and from you. Similarly, my children help me to cultivate humble inquiry and to reject smug complacency. They tread paths of discovery every day, throwing questions in handfuls that bloom into other questions. Why is the moon following us? Why does red mean stop? Why does Z come at the very end? Why do they say girls rule and boys drool? Why does cold water taste better? Why does everything have a sound? What does north mean? 
If animals did people things, would squirrels use leaves as parachutes? <laughs> and that's just recently. My kids wake me up to the mystery all around, especially since they themselves are such a source of wonder. Finally, like Lord Peter Whimsey, who goes from frivolous aristocrat to a good man, or William of Baskerville, whose very worldview is altered by what he discovers in the name of the rose, the mystery will change you. You are caught up in it now, and it will play out in your lives. The settings will vary and change, but engaging with the world as a mystery can be helpful in the days to come. It can deepen your dependence on scripture and encourage you to pay attention as you recognize the manifestations of God's grace, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. For example, I think of my daughter Alice, born amidst a global pandemic during a time when fear was as thick as fog on the mountain. When she arrived, the presence of her little self was reassuring beyond words, a living, breathing, crying sign of God's goodness. I think of trying to comfort my father in the midst of sickness and his relentless, almost unbearable physical pain. Buddy, it's going to be okay, he said, loving me so much that he was comforting me. I think of walking around with fatigue from sleepless nights with a newborn and seeing my three-year-old daughter Rosalie in her unicorn nightgown reaching for dust motes in a halo of morning sunlight with a fragile beauty that stopped me in my tracks and I knew I'd miss that moment for the rest of my days. Or saying goodbye to a friend and a Christian brother with cancer. Both of us knew it was the last time, but when he died I felt in a way that I never had before that he's not gone for good, he's just somewhere else. And so I grieve with hope and I look forward to seeing him again. All of these things speak to the mystery I'm talking about. They point to a goodness beyond measure. So you have wonderful and mysterious moments in store. And because you know the person at the heart of it all, you can acknowledge them as true, not accidental or incidental, but from the author of goodness himself and truer than the darkness that insists we attend to it. We don't have all the answers, but we know that such moments are part of a bigger story of his work in the world. Because we see through a glass darkly, we need help paying attention to the mystery. So listen to others' stories. Help them see their stories in light of the mystery of God and have them help you. I first encountered Covenant College through its graduates, people in my community who were salt and light who encouraged me to see the world by means of the great mystery that I'm talking about. All of them express the hope they have in Christ in a faithful and deeply bracing way. They prompted me to think, what is this place that graduates such people? That will be you. So, prompted by wonder, inhabit the mystery and be changed by it. Scots, the game is afoot. May God bless you. Thank you. The candidates for degrees will now be presented by the college's chief academic officer. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree please stand? President Halverson, on behalf of the faculty of Covenant College, with noted exceptions, I present to you the candidates who have completed the requirements for the bachelor's degree. For your achievement, I offer the heartfelt congratulations of the entire Covenant College community. Inasmuch as you have completed all of the requirements for graduation by the authority of the Board of Trustees of Covenant College and the Board of Education of the State of Georgia, I confer upon you your bachelor's degrees with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Please come forward. Major in Art, Eden Elizabeth Anyabwile. <laughs> Ashley Lynn Baker. <laughs> Carolina Ray Barrett.
Hannah Catherine Basil. Lucy Caroline Calhoun. Lily Grace Evans Magna Cum Laude. Holly Lauren Fall Cum Laude. Shelby Elizabeth Farrar Cum Laude. Fiona Star Glazier Pern. Nina Pearl Groly Magna Cum Laude. Emily Catherine Highsmith Cum Laude. John Freeman Hooker the Fourth. Caleb Christian Keat. Faith Danielle Payne. Paige Nicole Pettit, cum laude. Joshua Arden Platts. Rachel Marie Perchance Rolston, cum laude. Bennett Andrew Sunder. Victoria Nadine Vincel, cum laude. Joseph Adam Woodward, cum laude. With a double major in art and German studies, Anna Beth Walter. With a double major in art and philosophy and religion, Claire Elise Michael. With a major in biblical and theological studies, Aaron Kumar Anand Cum Laude. Trevor Sean T.J. Barringer II, cum laude. Nathan Allen Castillo. Michael Kenneth Hughes. Aaron Matthew John Innes, cum laude. Scott Andrew Koshanik. <laughs> Michaela Rose Lenk Summa Cum Laude. Andrew Thomas Lukenbill. Ryan Michael Rhodes Summa Cum Laude. Robert Tristan Smallwood. With a major in biology, Margaret Grace Bartley. David Aiken Coddington, summa cum laude. Katerina Marie Creel, magna cum laude. Rebecca Jean Doctor Summa Cum Laude. Miriam Dawn Emerson Magna Cum Laude. Kendall Ashley Freeman Magna Cum Laude. Daniel Dominic Freeman. Olivia Noel Hochrein, magna cum laude. Rachel Nicole Corver, summa cum laude. Noah Allen Lee, magna.
Magna Cum Laude. Faith Marigale Manning. Addison Nikkei Macaulay Cum Laude. Joshua Peter McDonald. Zachary Robert McDonald. Diana Alexis Muniz. Lane Addison Nash. Megan Lee Rescue. Michael Everett Rawlings. Caroline Jean Reese Magna Cum Laude. Harrison Hunter Richards. William Allen Richardson. Emily Grace Robertson. Alexa Dawn Sperling. James Brock Stevenson, Magna Cum Laude. Samuel Walker Taylor. Blake Douglas Thomas. Joshua David Van Mierbeck, Cum Laude. Jesse Daniel Walter, Summa Cum Laude. Liana Rose Wilson, Summa Cum Laude. With a major in business, Samuel Jackson Allen. Zachary Foster Allen. Sophia Andre. Alicia Constance Andrews. Bond Bailey. Nathan Alexander Carrillo. Christopher Adam Carter. Arman Bakari Butler. Christopher Adam Carver. Anna Catherine Cobb. Sophia Jean Cross. Joel Douglas Doms. James Micah Davis. Ashlyn Carolina Franks. Alex Christopher Gonzalez. Meredith Grace Lee Cum Laude. Matthew Bradley Mathis. Madison Lee McCullough. Tyler Nicholas Moore. Levi Hugh Oren. James Riley Prescott. Virginia K. Walker Roberts. John Randolph Sadler III, cum laude. Aubrey Blair Smith, summa cum laude. Garrett Scott Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Alexander.
Alexander Joshua State. Nathan Robert Stern, cum laude. Paul Elliot Stern. Mariah Ann Westra, summa cum laude. Elsa Ann Malie Woody. With a double major in business and Spanish, Matthew David Moorfield, cum laude. With a major in chemistry, Ian Robert Banks, cum laude. Ismael Bartolome Kulien. Isaac Walter Schutko. With a major in community development, Madison Elizabeth Allen, cum laude. Emma Oakley Bowling. Emily Renee Brower, cum laude. Sarah Catherine Delk. Sean Patrick Grady, cum laude. Lauren Grace Harrington, summa cum laude. Sydney Bryn Newton, cum laude. Madison Lane Taylor. Abigail Faith Warren, cum laude. With a double major in biology and community development, Grace Elizabeth Herring. William Albritton Payne Magna, cum laude. With a major in computer science, Laney Marie Beckwith, magna cum laude. Josiah Rolf Cannon, cum laude. Jonathan Wyatt George. Julian Elias Lowry, magna cum laude. David Paul Moran, cum laude. <laughs> Elena Grace Hatch O'Neill, summa cum laude. <laughs> Timothy Taylor Rackley. <laughs> Avery Jordan Radmaker, summa cum laude. <laughs> Marisol Ayalen Rios Lecaros. Noel Yunmi Willems, magna cum laude. With a major in economics, Ella Jean Carlson, magna cum laude. Aeol Adelaide Ann Huto. Zechariah Arnold Curtis. Michael John Fenneman Magna Cum Laude. Caroline Camille Messer Summa Cum Laude. Anderson Scott Morris. Yeah, Natalie Jane Northcutt. 
David Philip Seaton. Elias Emery Vedders. William Henry Wallace V. Joseph Maxwell Ryder Welsh Cum Laude. Anna Miller Green Wortham Summa Cum Laude. With a double major in economics and community development, Anne Helena Miller Cum Laude. With a major in elementary education, Riley Arlene Battenfield. <laughs> Leah Noel Buys Cum Laude. Sarah Lane Cochran. Sydney Ann Fitch. Madison Elise Gibbons, cum laude. Michaela Grace Hall, cum laude. Sophia Teresa Hayes. Chaz Mitchell Kimbrell, cum laude. Erica Dania Lines, cum laude. Heather Ashley Long. Ashley Marie Lukenbill Magna, cum laude. Tiffany Victoria Elizabeth Majors, Magna, cum laude. Bailey Elizabeth McDonald, cum laude. Mary Ellen Love Mitchell. Emily Alice Moore. Margaret Elizabeth Parry. Megan Nicole Schroeder, cum laude. Elizabeth Joy Holtz Stevenson. <laughs> Hannah McKay King Thomas. <laughs> Kelsey Leanne Westmoreland, cum laude. <laughs> With the major in English, Mark David Alexander, cum laude. Mackenzie Grace Andrews. Justine K. Blick, cum laude. Olivia Grace Bloxham, summa cum laude. Kayla Joy Brown, cum laude. William Sadler Crumley. Emily Abigail Davis, cum laude. Emma Ryan Stacy Di Dominico. Sarah Loray Dreer, summa cum laude. Jackson Cole Elling. Juanita Marie Bowen Fenema Summa Cum Laude. Elias William Ferenci. Leon Ray Perez the third summa cum laude. Ivan Carlos Flower. Sarah 
Elizabeth Gidney Summa Cum Laude. Susanna Lee Guthman. Mary Faith Haynes Magna Cum Laude. Hannah Grace Gerard. Harmony Christina Keat. Alison Grace McGregor Cum Laude. Hope Kathleen Merrill Cum Laude. Jacob Tyler Murdoch. Claire Delaney Piquette. Sophia Rose Shell Cum Laude. Caitlin Mary Smith Cum Laude. Abigail McLean Sorrow Cum Laude. Mary Kate Thomas. Kelly Lynn Woodford Magna Cum Laude. With a double major in English and Art, Eleanor Grace Brown Magna Cum Laude. With a double major in English and Philosophy, Dustin Martin Hayes Magna Cum Laude. With a double major in English and Arts, Aline Marie Sluice. With a double major of English and Philosophy and Religion, Caleb Robert Walter Magna Cum Laude. With a major in French, Da Xing Ying Kane. Catherine Rilla Oren. Halle Blair Quattro Magna Cum Laude. Tobin Livingston Smith Cum Laude. With a major in German Studies, Gabrielle Rachel Ramey. With a major in History, Jacob Austin Brown. Marcus Devon Dorsey, Cum Laude. Avery Elise Drury, Cum Laude. Maria Carol Coletti Edling, Cum Laude. Jessica Catherine Flory, Cum Laude. Paige Alana Hangar Summa, Cum Laude. With a double major in History and Political Science, Leif Josiah Lemahieu, Magna Cum Laude. With a major in interdisciplinary studies, Chuin Cha Pei. <laughs> Rebecca Elizabeth Carter, Cum Laude. Savannah Madeline Deub. Anna Gail Donaldson. Daniel John Glacier. Jake William Hayes. Megan Elizabeth Heath. Lauren Sarah 
Johnson. Abigail Marie Cavalli. Paul Christian LeMay Magna Cum Laude. Joshua Turner Lippard. Pedro Javier Martinez. Emily Grace Pritchett Radmaker Cum Laude. Mary Ann Virginia Rowland. Gregory Raphael Royal. Seth Randall Van Dyke Magna Cum Laude. Nayali Montserrat Velasquez. With a major in international studies, Sarah Eve Copeland. Brooke Aaron Gidney, summa cum laude. Hannah Rachel Grunendijk, cum laude. Mallory Geneva Harmon, cum laude. Viviana Ann Marshall. Gianni Gabriela Martinez Munoz. Liam Scott Orville. Madeline Grace Catlin Plating, cum laude. Luke Lawrence Reagan. Julia Caroline Smith. Zachary Scott Williams. With the major in mathematics, Anna Caroline Spencer, summa cum laude. With a double major of computer science and mathematics, Nathan Philip Walker, cum laude. With a major in music, Leslie Ann Hill. Jonathan Paul Kaufman. Mark Mitchell Parry. With a major in natural science pre-engineering, Andrew David Klein, cum laude. Anna Elizabeth Danik, summa cum laude. Isaac Finn Davis, cum laude. John William Flynn. Roy Makar Gabriel Magna, cum laude. Julia Christine Glaze. Elias Daniel Eirich. Nicholas Stephen Kiratsis. Joshua Terry Simmons, cum laude. Ryan Robert Williams. With a major in philosophy, David Michael Kraus, summa cum laude. Henry Magdalene Lowe, summa cum laude. Noah Davis McKay, summa cum laude. With a double 
major in philosophy and political science, Zoe Catherine Kiratsis Cum Laude. <laughs> major in psychology, Joy Nicole Aikens. <laughs> Heather Lily Andrews Magna Cum Laude. William Alexander Bryan. <laughs> Philip Thomas Carinard. <laughs> Christopher Ryan Davila. <laughs> Jenna Ruth Donay, summa cum laude. Leslie Dubel, <laughs> Lana Elise Hill, <laughs> Bradford Luke Hunter, cum laude, <laughs> McKenna Caroline Gerard. Abigail Grace Kern Kartenhoven, cum laude. <laughs> Maria Lanska. <laughs> Caitlin Nicole Lapena, cum laude. <laughs> Hope Meredith Martoff, cum laude. Molly Catherine McLaren. <laughs> Alexandra Lauren McKay, summa cum laude. <laughs> Hannah Olivia Monday. <laughs> Walker Jackson Owsley. Esther Flora Pruitt, cum laude. John Samuel Shoup, cum laude. Bethany Grace Sikink Magna, cum laude. Emma Rebecca Smith, summa cum laude. Madeline Claire Sparks, summa cum laude. <laughs> Lindsay Joyce Stevens, magna cum laude. <laughs> Rachel Elizabeth Thomas. <laughs> Benjamin Garrison Tyson. <laughs> Sarah Grace Walters, cum laude. <laughs> Seth Mobalaji Young. <laughs> With a major in sociology, Mariah Denise Barr. <laughs> Bruna Victoria de Oliveira. Mary Grace Donaldson, summa cum laude. John Mark Patrick Dubel. Lydia Catherine Greninger, magna cum laude. Elissa Jane Gunter, summa cum laude. Caroline Joyce Pepper, cum laude. Luis Antonio Rosa. Carson Emily Stone. With a major in Spanish, William Stockton Snugs. 
Margaret Joyce Wade Magna Cum Laude. With a major in sport administration, Brooks Andrew DuBose. <laughs> Emma Kate Giller. Andrew Harrison Northcutt. Reed Logan Reynolds. James Lewis Saunders. Stephen Ross Skipper. Benjamin Jeffrey Walsh. Will the candidates for Master of Arts in Teaching and the Master of Education degrees please stand? President Halverson, the candidates before you have completed the requirements for the Master of Arts in Teaching and the Master of Education degrees. For your achievement, I offer the heartfelt congratulations of the entire Covenant College community. And by the authority of the Board of Trustees of Covenant College and the Board of Education of the State of Georgia, I confer upon you your master's degrees with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Please come forward. With a degree of Master of Arts in Teaching, Joshua Carroll Grossi. <laughs> Jacob Adam, Adam Kortenhoven. Margaret Blake Luke. <laughs> Zachariah Duane McKillop. Ashley Nicole Parker. <laughs> Hannah Catherine Pulliam. Sabrina Marie Richline. <laughs> Jesse Thomas Riggs. With a degree of Master of Education in Educational Leadership, Robert Trevor Moore. Jared Scott Pike.
Matthew Thomas Weaver. With a degree of Master of Education in Integrated Curriculum and Instruction, Lauren Elizabeth DeYoung. Mary Caitlin Finch. Ruth Godwin. <laughs> Melanie Diane Ray. Would you all please take a moment to congratulate the classes of 2020 and 2021? I'd now like to invite Dr. Bruce Young, Professor of Education, to lead us in a prayer for the graduates. Let's pray. Father, we rejoice this afternoon in the graduation of these students. We praise you for graciously, and in some cases miraculously, bringing them through the trials and challenges of Covenant's academic rigor and in the midst of a pandemic. So we now ask you, Lord, to continue to bless them as they walk into a world that's becoming increasingly divided and increasingly hostile towards you and your children. Father, help them to remember that their struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers of the dark world, against spiritual forces in, of evil in heavenly realms. To this end, Lord, help them not to be blind to the invisible, but open their eyes as you opened the eyes of Elisha's servant when they were surrounded by the Assyrian army. You enabled the servant to see the invisible, the army of angels outnumbering the Assyrians and protecting Elisha and his servant. So remind these graduates, Lord, each morning when they wake up to put on your holy armor so they may stand against Satan's evil schemes. Remind them to put on each piece with prayer. Lord, may these graduates become a people of prayer. Satan will do everything in his power to keep them from praying. He fears nothing from our prayerless Bible studies, our prayerless work, our prayerless religion. He laughs at our efforts, he mocks at our wisdom, but he trembles when we pray. Father, may these graduates live in the full reality of seeing the invisible so that they can be encouraged to fearlessly make known the gospel wherever you call them to serve. May this group of graduates use their newly gained knowledge and skills to glorify you by being the hands, the feet, and the mouth of Jesus to a perishing world that is so desperately in need of the love of Jesus. Father, fill them with your spirit so they can have compassion for others and the courage to apply the healing medicine of the gospel to the hurting lives around them. 
So now to you alone, Lord, be the honor and glory forever. Lord, bless these graduates, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'm pleased to welcome the Reverend Dr. Render Keynes to bring a commendation from the Board of Trustees. Uh, Reverend Keynes and his wife Linda graduated from Covenant College in 1969. He received his MDiv from Westminster Theological Seminary in 1972 and his DMIN from Covenant Theological Seminary in 1987. Uh, Render has served in several pastoral roles and was the organizing pastor for Covenant Presbyterian Church in Chattanooga, Tennessee in 1988 where he served as senior pastor until his retirement in 2015. He has served on the college's board of trustees since 1985. Render and Linda have six grown children, all of whom attended Covenant and four of whom are graduates of Covenant College and 26 grandchildren. Now, would you please welcome Reverend Keynes? Well, on behalf of my uh, fellow trustees, I congratulate you and commend you on your graduation from Covenant College. Uh, a few of you know me. I think you'd find it hard to believe that my grandchildren refer to me as grumpy grandpa. But I want you to think of me as just a kind and gentle Grandfather, please. <laughs> As I attempt to uh, encourage you for just a moment, encourage you to remember and to believe that throughout Scripture, the Lord tells you that He is your rock. Your rock. Knowing, believing, and remembering that will dramatically impact your life. There are going to come times when the realities of life will get so hot you're going to think that you simply can't stand it. But the Lord, being your rock, he will provide the shade that you need to keep you from being overwhelmed by the heat. The shade he graciously supplies will be found in prayerfully reading and hearing the word of the Lord as he speaks to your heart and to your mind. Scripture also says the Lord your rock is your fortress. Believing what you believe, the evil one and his many allies will attack you. But by prayerfully entering into his word, you will find a strong fortress that not even all the forces of hell can overcome. Jesus builds upon these Old Testament metaphors by telling you, I am your rock. I am the sure foundation upon which if you build your house, it will stand firm. Even when the rains pour down and the flood waters rise and the winds howl. So along with my fellow trustees, I pray, I pray that both now and throughout the years to come, you will remember the Lord is your rock. He is your shade in a weary land. He is your strong fortress. He is your firm foundation. Lord bless you. We are now going to join our voices in singing the college hymn, All for Jesus. Would you please stand?
Following our recessional, uh, graduates will be 